Morning everybody. Here at the shop with Old Blue. I'll put up your hood a little bit. Got a little bit of an exhaust leak. One of my exhaust clamps has come loose, is getting old. Gotta quickly replace that. And then we got lots to do today. This here is the culprit. Gotta get a new one. All right. We've got the old one. And we've got the new one. Simple fix, I hope. A little bit of an exhaust leak coming through there and I could smell it in my cab, which is never a good thing. You don't want the exhaust coming into the cab. So this week was so cold, it was minus 32 overnight. So I had to idle the truck more than I, much more than I usually would. I don't like doing that, but this week will be warmer. I won't have to, but since I had to idle it, I had to be sure that at night I would put the air to recirculate in, in the cab or crack my windows, put the air to recirculate so it's not sucking air from under the hood because it was taking that exhaust and shooting it into the truck that wasn't good uh, at least it smelt like it was it wasn't too bad but bad enough so I had to crack the windows just to crack and then run my bunk heater which takes air from under my sleeper and shoots it into the truck instead of from under the hood and that solved the problem completely I had no fumes in the truck plus I had the fresh air coming in a little bit colder but uh, we made it work right so now I'm gonna fix that so that uh, on my next trip I don't got to worry about that I don't like exhaust leaks not good. It stinks. You know, it could kill you. <laughs> so that's a little bit of an issue. Crazy world we live in, but still love diesel trucks. I, I got my eye on those electric trucks, but you know, my biggest thing with the electric trucks, because I have no problems with electric vehicles. Honestly, Britt and I, for our next vehicle, uh, we're, we're planning on always having a gas pickup truck, like this gas pickup truck, or I might, I'll probably get one more in my lifetime, one or two more in my lifetime before I retire. Maybe one more and then one new one just as I retire. Ah, whatever, we'll figure that out. But uh, for a family vehicle, right now we have our Terrain, which is a four cylinder, 2.2 uh, .2 liter, or is a 2.4 uh, gas engine. It's, it's great, but our next vehicle, we're actually looking into the new GM electric vehicles coming out. Because in Manitoba here, we have such cheap electricity. We're paying, is it nine or 10 cents a kilowatt hour? Somewhere in that range, maybe 11. And it's a flat rate. There is no peak hours and there's no, uh, you know, it's just a flat rate all the time. And if we want a big SUV and we're looking at the, the GMC Yukon, possibly the Yukon XL. We'll see how big we get our family to be, but at least the Yukon. And that's a big gas guzzling engine, just like this pickup truck. It's a big V8. And if we need to get a gas engine, I'm totally fine with that, but we're sold on this vehicle, right? Now, in the next few years, GM is coming out with the EV version of the Yukon, and we're we're looking at it. That's uh, something that we're interested in. Not saying we're going to buy it, but we're definitely going to take a serious look at it, take one for a test drive, do a lot of research on it. We're sticking with GM. I don't want a Tesla, though Teslas are great vehicles, and I, I like what Musk is doing with that but I don't like their designs. I think all Tesla vehicles are, except for their cars, but I think they're ugly. Like no offense if you own one, but the, 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 the Tesla pickup truck, the Cybertruck is an abomination. It's dis it's so ugly. It's like a giant doorstop. It's disgusting. The Tesla Semi, again, it's an abomination on the road. Great idea, okay? If you can build the infrastructure to support electric semis that need to charge quickly on the road, okay, you wanna go that route, just don't take diesel away from us. Give us the choice, either or. Uh, I don't like the looks of them. To me, personally, they're ugly. I don't wanna drive them. I wanna drive that I'm, I wanna drive a truck that I'm happy driving. That's why I bought a W900. I didn't, you don't buy a W900 for fuel economy. That's not the reason I bought it. I bought it because I wanted a truck that I loved and that I'm happy in. 
yeah, and I gotta pay the hood tax. It's got a long hood and not as aerodynamic. I'm okay with that because I'm driving a truck that I'm happy with and I chose that. It was my choice. So, if they made electric trucks that had the classic nose, long nose, like a Tesla came out with that classic American looking truck as an option, like you don't have to take away that. I understand a lot of companies and corporations, they want these aerodynamics. Totally understand that. But some of us, we want a truck. Like a stock truck, you know, like a Peterbilt 389, 379, a W900. Uh, you can throw in... Uh, a couple of other trucks there too of just you know something that you're happy with and so far tesla's only got the the one version of truck and i don't like that and we didn't want to get a tesla suv either because again i don't like the design of it it's not so bad it's not an ugly suv but i don't like the, the back doors the way they flip up like eh, it's personal a personal thing i don't like it that much but we're hardcore gm enthusiasts we love gm vehicles so GM is coming out with an entire line of EVs that are coming out with uh, the Yukon. And we're, we're actually probably going to take a look at it. So I'm not against. The reason I'm telling you this isn't to get your opinion on whether or not we should go with e an EV. We'll decide that for ourselves when the time comes and we do our research. But uh, my point is that I'm not against electric vehicles. I think they're neat and interesting. I think that they're fascinating in that they could be a big market one day. There could be a big market for it one day if they build the infrastructure and charging stations needed. I just hope that they don't force us away from diesel. Let the market decide. If EVs are that much better, just they'll naturally win out, right? But give us all, let us keep both. Because for a semi truck, I want a diesel truck. For a pickup truck, I want a gas V8 or a diesel. But for a family vehicle that we use every day, that we take the kids to hockey practice and hockey games in and we go visit family, yeah, because to fill up a Yukon, a GMC Yukon here in Canada, would probably be about $130 right now in 2023. Who knows? And that's going to keep going up and up and up, right? So over $100, $150 maybe, depending on how big the tank is. Now, I've done this research already. To fill that same battery bank up in the Yukon EV, to fill that same thing up, would be like $5.50. Plus, there's no oil changes. There's less maintenance. There's way more torque. You have an individual electric motor on each wheel, so it's like independent all-wheel drive, pretty much. Uh, the battery packs are underneath the vehicle, so it's a very low center of gravity. Uh, makes for rollovers would be, uh, it helps in the rollover situation when you have a low center of gravity. I, I mean, I think they're a good idea. I just don't want to go completely that way. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I've been long-winded here anyways. My point is that uh, when I, I got a new clamp, We're not going to stay in our little house that we're in now forever. This is a temporary home. It's not our forever home. When we get into our forever home, we're only going to move one more time, hopefully. That's going to have a, a garage on it. I want a two-car insulated garage. But uh, if, if we seriously want to go down the path of possibly having an EV in the future, like I'm talking like 10 years or something, long ways in the future, a lot of time to think about it yet, we're going to have to have a heated garage to park in it. Because when you have a battery like that, you don't want to park that outside in our climate in minus 35. It's just going to reduce your battery uh, battery life. That's another thing you have to keep in mind. If you do want an EV up here, I would say you definitely should have a warm place to park it every night. Because I don't think they'd work very well if they're parked outside in the cold. you got to keep those batteries warm, right? That would be our plan. So we've, we've put a lot of thought into this. It's not like I'm just... You know, oh, hey, let's get an electric vehicle because that's what they're all talking about. No, I'm very middle of the road with them. I think that they're a good idea, but I don't want to give up my combustion engines at the same time. I want both. I'm fence sitter, milk toast fence sitter, maybe. Let's see what the future brings. I'm, I'm very excited actually, and fascinated and interested to see what GM comes up with in their line of EVs. We want to see someone else buy them, like other people, see how they perform, see what their range is like. You know, after a certain amount of time, the battery loses its life, you may have to replace the battery. How much would the battery cost, right? And then you compare that to all the maintenance that you're saving, because you're not doing oil changes. Uh, the, the maintenance cycle is completely different on an EV. So in the end, would it balance out? Would it be more expensive? Would, would it actually save us money? Like, a lot of research to do. But if, I can tell you one thing, if gas prices keep going through the roof like they are, I mean, 
And I know that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it unaffordable to have combustion engines. And I hate it that they're forcing us towards EVs. I don't want to be forced. I'm already interested. I'm already looking at them. I already think that they're pretty cool. You don't need to force me into them by bankrupting me and taxing the living daylights out of me. You don't need to do that. Just present me with the technology and I'll be like, whoa, that's pretty cool. I want to take a look at that. You don't need to take my money away from me, right? But yeah, it's uh, something that we got a lot of time on yet. I think we can keep the vehicles we have now for about another at least five years, maybe even 10. I mean, we'll see. A lot of time. We got other things to think about right now, like a baby. It's coming next month. End of March now. The due date is April 1st, but since it's going to be a C-section, it'll be a little early. So it'll be in March, next month. We got to get that nursery done. Another thing with EVs, you have to remember, they're not that... They're, they're not environmentally friendly compared to a combustion engine. They aren't. The lithium mines that they need to dig out of the... Like they they got to dig that lithium out of the ground for the batteries, right? Those are terrible for the environment. Those batteries' lifespan will be like, what, five, maybe ten years? Just like a regular car, you switch it out. Those battery banks, when they go to the, like, to the dump or the disposal yard, they don't just decompose. They're going to be sitting there for thousands of years. You know, the world could end and civilization could blow itself up in a nuclear war and thousands of years from now, humans will find these battery packs like, buried in the ground and they're gonna think they found some kind of like alien buried technology or something. Cause they're still gonna be there. And when you charge your electric vehicle, you also have to realize, uh, you gotta think of where's that electricity coming from? In Manitoba here, it is green energy. It's 90, 95% hydropower from dams up north. So here it would make sense you would reduce your emissions like that. But if you're in other places where electricity comes from coal-fired power plants or oil-fired power plants or natural gas, you're not really doing anything to save the planet. All you're doing is you're taking the exhaust from your car that would usually be coming out of your car and you're just spitting it out of your nearest power plant instead. It's, it's still spitting it out into the same air. It's just instead of the, the pollution being on the roads and in the cities, it'll be around the power plant. It's still going into the atmosphere though. But it might clear up the air in the cities though. It'll just move that pollution to outside the cities where the power is coming from, right? Right? So it's not really, the, I'm not looking into it for environmental reasons. I'm looking into it because where I live, electricity is cheap. And it sort of might make sense. But it doesn't make sense in all places. That's why I say, just keep both, let us choose. Let us have combustion engines and electric. Let us choose. No need to tax me into oblivion. It's already hard enough to feed ourselves and feed our families. Stealing money off of our tables and money out of our bank accounts isn't going to solve anything. It's just going to make us poorer. But I am kind of excited. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm excited to try out these, these things. And maybe we'll decide it's not for us, or maybe we'll decide it doesn't save us enough money or anything. Then we'll just stick with gas vehicles. We'll, we'll see. You know, all of these, you know, carbon taxes, we have one here in Canada too, it's just ridiculous. It doesn't do anything uh, to reduce anything. But uh, there's all these taxes around the, the Western world where these governments are trying to tax people to force them into different forms of energy use, right? I get what they're trying to do. But in my opinion, honestly, I think all that's going to do is make people not want to switch over to electric vehicles out of spite. Because no one likes being forced to, to do anything. And when you make them poorer and you take away their money and say, we're making you poorer for a good cause. We're making you poorer so that you buy this expensive new technology. Well, how are we going to buy that new technology if you keep making us poorer? Why don't you try making us more wealthy and trying different tactics to make us want to buy these new technologies? Because I think a lot of people right now are completely turned off from electric cars and electric things because governments are forcing them into it. And they're just... They're angry, and out of spite, they don't even want to look at them. They don't even want to talk about them. Like, you can probably look at the comment section of this video, and there's people who hate the idea of electric vehicles and electric trucks. And they all have their own reasons, but I think a lot of it comes from a place of spite that they're being forced into it. And that governments are literally stealing money from them to convince them that it's a good idea. 
It, I would say if I was in charge, things would be done a lot differently. A lot differently. Forcing people to do something by taking money from them is no way to convince anyone of anything. I'm already interested. But I do have a little bit of that spite in me though too, right? Because I want to try out these electric vehicles, but I'm like, at the same time, I'm angry that they're like, am I doing this because they're, they've forced me into this? Like they keep jacking up gas prices and they keep you know, taxing me for the energy I use to heat my home and drive my vehicle with carbon tax. And I have no choice, we have to deliver freight, yet they keep making it more expensive to do our job. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost angry at the electric vehicle market because of the, the situation we're in. It's just, everything's always the apocalypse. Oh, everything, the world's ending. There's always a reason why they need to take our money. Always. And it's always to save the world. A noble cause. We must take all your money. It's for the greater good. It's for all mankind. We must take all your money to save you. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right. Old one. New one. You can see where the exhaust was coming out there. Smoked it up pretty good. You can tell it's bad by the way it is. You can also tell this table's very dirty by the way it is too. I don't know why I'm talking like that, but I need to clean this table off apparently. I'm gonna bull snot that in just a bit. Why is there bread sitting here? Oh, cause my cooler's right there, I get it. Oh, lots to do. My brain's going all over in all kinds of different directions and came all the way over here. Throw that in there. Here we go. Next, Treasure Josh. Just call me Mechanic Josh. Got an exhaust clamp you need replaced? I know how to do it. You are not very nice. There are better things I could have done with my morning. While I'm putting this together for you guys here in Old Blue, and uh, the majority of today's vlog was talking about electric vehicles and my frustrations with governments forcing us towards them. And I hope that my message was sort of conveyed properly that I am really interested in the electric vehicle technology. I'm. I'm I'm excited to see where that market goes. I just don't want to be forced towards it. I don't like being forced to do anything. I want an option. All right, if it's that much better, I'll gravitate towards that all on my own. If it's that much better, believe me, I'll be buying one first chance I get. But for our pickup truck, for a working truck, it'll always be for us, for me anyways, a combustion V8 engine. Like the truck I have now, I, I love my truck, my pickup truck. For a semi truck that I'm driving now, diesel engines are the best. But for a family vehicle, yeah, we're looking towards one of the, uh, the EVs in the future. If we, ha if we can find a different house one day, once we, once we move into a new house with a warm garage that we can park it in. That's my one rule. I've, Britt and I have talked about this. We will be looking at the GM EVs, uh, the Yukons. They're coming out in the next year or two. We're gonna look at them and test drive one. And uh, But the only way we're gonna buy one is if we have a warm garage to park it in. You don't wanna park an EV out in Manitoba winters outside. It, it, just, it just won't work. But our electricity rates are so low that it kind of makes sense. Well, it's very cheap to run one of those here. I have an open mind, right? I have an open mind. I just really don't like being forced in one direction. You know, I don't like money being taken away from me as a, you know, incentive for me to go one direction or the other. I, I just let the free market decide. I'm already interested in your fancy electric vehicles, okay? I think they're pretty cool. You don't need to convince me of that, okay? 
stealing money out of my wallet and food off the table for my family isn't like the carbon tax is not going to push me faster in that direction i'm already looking in that direction i'm like hey that's pretty cool i hope that that message came across properly it was a day at home we have another day at home tomorrow but uh, we'll be back on the road soon thanks for tuning in everybody i'd love to know your opinion on electric vehicles do you have an open mind on them obviously you're going to see in my comment section there's a lot of people that have a very closed mind towards electric vehicles because of the reasons i already stated it's very hard to convince people that something's a good idea if you're going to force them in that direction people, nobody likes being forced to do anything but well, what's your opinion on them you know i have an open mind let's see what the future brings you know Back in the late 1800s, people who were talking about combustion engines and, you know, uh, having uh, horseless carriages, they were deemed like, you know, crazy people. Like, people thought that anyone who thought that you could have a horseless carriage in the future was just nuts and out of their mind, right? They thought that cars were cr a crazy idea that'll never happen. And look at us now, right? Now we got cars. we'll see what happens I love life I love I love it seeing what comes from our innovation as humans we are a fascinating species we keep making things better and we keep making new things some things are better than others but hmm? the future I'm an optimist the future is bright we'll see what happens I'm excited to see what happens Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit that like button with all of your might. Hit it down there for me. Helps me out a lot. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on electric vehicles. And uh, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, hit that bell beside the, the subscribe button. That will, uh, that will let you know when I release my next video. We release videos almost every day. I'll talk to you in my next one.